Hi, Chief Sigourin. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. It, it's always all the better for speaking to someone who's doing so much good. We try. Uh, <laughs> from what I hear, you do quite a bit. Before we get into your actual event, tell us how you went from advertising to being a firefighter, because that's you could have just coasted and been a creative and not have to risk your life. <laughs> well, I think that they're, they're concurrent. I joined the fire department, the volunteer fire department, when I was 18 years old. Uh, because the guys that I knew back then, the the whistle would blow and a truck would pull up in front of the office. They'd run out and jump on the back of the truck and drive off. And I'd say, that's so cool. <laughs> Not realizing what the other portions of firefighting actually entailed, but they ended up sponsoring me. I ended up joining, uh, working my way up through uh, being a lieutenant and, and loving it, but that that was all volunteer. Uh, and I ran my business simultaneously. One of the greatest stories, one of the volunteers was a dentist who left a patient on nitrous with his assistant while he ran out to a call. So moving up uh, many, many years later, uh, I started working with the FDNY on programs that they were trying to build. Then 9-11 happened and I responded. Uh, my daughter was two weeks old at the time. My wife kept on reminding me that as I responded to buildings collapsing um, and then worked down there uh, with Engine One for many days. And then after that, uh, I was asked to be a, a member of the uh, New York State Honorary Chiefs, uh, which was a great honor. And then, uh, like typically everything goes, I became president of that organization. Uh, so I've been president now for the last four years. Uh, so I still run my marketing and advertising business, and I, in my rest of the time, work with the fire department. It's, it's quite an interesting juxtaposition um, and, and, and you know, to be congratulated because it's just, again, it would be just some people just don't actually walk the walk. You know, it's easy to say stuff and then not do it. Shockingly, 85 percent, 85 percent of the fire departments in the United States are fully volunteer fire departments. Most people don't realize that. I did not. And, and you know, it's funny because where we sometimes reside upstate New York, um, we once called 9-11 and the people were there in five minutes, fire department people, and they were volunteers. I couldn't say enough good things about them. Well, you know, we do get $100 a year for our service. Yeah, I figured. That's, that's so you're in <laughs> for the money, obviously. Um, what have been some of the stories you could tell about working with, with your brothers and sisters that are volunteers? Well, the, there are two sides to this coin. Uh, there is my volunteer service, <clears throat> which is where I actually would respond to calls. And then there is the work that I do with the FDNY and the paid fire departments of New York State. Our organization uh, represents all the paid firefighters in the state. There are 13,000 paid firefighters in the FDNY and about 15,000 paid firefighters throughout New York State. So it's only the major cities, you know, Syracuse, Buffalo, Schenectady, New York City that have paid fire departments because the number of calls are great enough that you'd never be able to get volunteers to staff all of them. Um, but in the volunteer world, uh, you know, we do the exact same thing that the paid fire department does, except we don't get paid for it. So if there's a fire, we're still running into the building and we make rescue calls. I've made over 5,000 rescue calls so far in, in my time frame with the uh, volunteers. Uh, everything from uh, delivering the mayor's baby to, uh, you know, coming in on, uh, as you can imagine, every kind of emergency that you would ever think of. Elevator, you know, people trapped in elevators, car accidents on the highway, railroad trains. Uh, even when the Avianca jet crashed in Long Island Sound, we were the first to respond in pulling people uh, out, of the, uh, out of Long Island Sound. What's the training that everyone goes under? There's uh, a year's worth of training. You're a probationary fireman for your first year. 
and uh, you go every Sunday and train. If you want to do more, like become a paramedic, I was a, a trained New York State paramedic. You go two nights a week for a year and have to log in a certain number of nights at the emergency room at the hospital uh, to you know learn and support. So the the amount of training is is tremendous uh, because like with the paid fire department you're going to be going into the same emergencies so you need to have the same type of training it, it it's you know you can feel very comfortable that your volunteer fire department is is very up to the task where was your interest in doing in doing this i know you said like you saw people do it but could you imagine that your career would be such that it's balancing two different extremes one is creative and one is 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 the psychology of trying to win for a brand and the other is completely self-sacrificing yeah it, you don't start out thinking about the self-sacrifice uh initially you think well this is a great way to meet girls when you're 18 years old you're you know nothing can ever hurt you anyway uh when you're 18 and 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 it was just really cool riding on fire trucks with lights and siren uh, it wasn't until I got trapped in my first building, uh, a house fire with a woman standing out on the front lawn yelling that her babies were in this burning house. And, uh, you know, we always joke around that that's the one thing that shuts a firefighter's brain off uh, to think that there's babies in a house. So we went running in and uh, we found out that the babies that she was referring to were her cats. Uh, and we found that out as the cats attached themselves to us uh, and we came walking out with these two cats literally glued to our turnout coat. Um, you know, so that was one story. And then when a roof collapsed on us, the air tanks that you have only have 20 minutes of air. So when you get down into the last couple of minutes, this tone starts going off saying, hopefully you're three minutes away from getting out of the building because you're about to be out of air. And uh, the roof collapsed and kind of formed this little pocket in the corner. And uh, I was a lieutenant. I had a fireman with me, Mr. Brown. Uh, and we couldn't go forward or going backwards and our air tones started going off and he just turned to me and said this is a drag yeah <laughs> it was like those were the last words i was gonna hear was dave going this is a drag and uh they literally cut the back of the house off with these saws that we have called uh, sawzalls k-12s and they cut the whole side of the house off and pulled him out all of a sudden he disappeared and then i saw a pike pole reach in and i grabbed it they pulled me out and that's how we got out but that was the closest uh, you know, that you sit there and you realize, well, wait a second, you could actually get hurt doing this. But, you know, the training and, and you know, everybody working as a team, uh, fortunately, you know, we came out OK. But I think the training is such that you learn so much that firefighting isn't as scary as somebody who's not trained might think of it. I did fight the uh, we had forest fires many years ago out in, in the Hamptons. And I went out and responded to that. And I can say that was the scariest thing I ever did because a house fire is pretty, pretty much they all follow the same format. But the forest fire would change direction and come at us at 60 miles an hour. Uh, that was scary. On occasion, have you collaborated on a job with paid firefighters? Yes, the fire department that I'm in uh, was first due to FDNY because we we're right on the borderline between Nassau County and New York City. So we would be the first due on a mutual aid to FDNY in the same way that we would be mutual aid to other fire departments on the island. But as a result, things that you don't realize that New York City fire hydrants have a different thread uh, on the fittings than the Nassau County fire uh, hydrants. So we always had to carry both FDNY and Nassau County uh, and make sure that we didn't get them confused. But I think the fire department, if you were ever going to look for a, a true ambassador to send out to other countries 
you would send firefighters as those ambassadors because they're worldwide they're they're respected they're loved kids love fire trucks they want to come to the firehouse there's no other organization you couldn't do it with military because people have different feelings about military you can't do it with police uh for the same reasons politicians you know let's not go there but firefighters globally are are respected we run into the building to save people's lives and uh people know that tell us about the event you have coming up and how can we help turn some attention there well we we do an an annual fundraise for our primary organization of the new york state honorary fire chiefs which has been an organization that was started back in 1950 uh, we've had honorary members, including Frank Sinatra and the Pope, uh, mayors, uh, celebrities. This year's uh, fundraising is being chaired by Melissa Gilbert and Timothy Busfield. And our mission is to raise money for scholarships for FDNY members who want to improve their knowledge, their careers to be better firefighters. So the New York City Fire Department are called the bravest. And our campaign, we talk about the bravest and the smartest. So if they're willing to go back to school to learn more, we're there to help them uh, pay for it. Upstate, uh, we do it for the kids of the firefighters who want to go to college, who have been accepted at colleges, because the average salary upstate for a paid fireman is $49,000. So if you try and throw a, 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 a tuition on top of that, you're you're having some challenges. So upstate, we, we do the kids, FDNY, we do the firefighters. I'm happy to say that last year, every firefighter in the FDNY that requested a scholarship got it. Where would people reach out to you to help either donate or just to build awareness or attend an event? Where would we find you? You can find us online at fdchiefs.org. If you type in .com by accident, that'll work too. On there, we'll give you our history and, and give you a link for donations. Uh, and uh, on there is our contact information. So if you reach out and want to speak with me, I'm more than happy to do that. Well, we really appreciate your service. Um, and can't say enough about gratitude. So thank you very much for everything that you do. Well, thank you.